Hello everyone and welcome back to Solid State Physics in a Nutshell, brought to you by the Physics Department at the Colorado School of Mines. Okay, so last time we took a look at thermal conductivity and related it to the heat capacity of your solid, the velocity of the phonons, and the mean free path between collisions. Today we're going to look a little bit more at this mean free path term, and in particular, look at phonon-phonon scattering. The first thing to do is recall that for phonons outside of the first baryon zone, these phonons can be translated back into the first baryon zone by some reciprocal lattice vector g with no loss of information. This was the whole Nyquist frequency argument. So when it comes to phonons scattering off of other phonons, we have to think about conservation loss. Okay, so remember first of all, phonons are bosons and quasiparticles, and so we can create them, we can destroy them, no big deal. And really, that phonon creation and destruction is at the heart of phonon-phonon scattering. So for example, in terms of conserving crystal momentum, I could have a phonon 1 and phonon 2 plus some reciprocal lattice vector g because of this whole quasi-momentum business, and those two phonons could come together and form phonon 3. And not only do we conserve crystal momentum in this way, but we also conserve energy. So E1 plus E2 equals E3. Likewise, on this lower line here, you can see how we could start with some high energy phonon, and that phonon could then split into two other phonons, Q2 and Q3, plus some reciprocal lattice vector G. Looking to the right here, we can see this energy conservation law for this phonon decaying into two other phonons. If this whole business seems really creepy of phonons just becoming other phonons, we can think about the photon analogy, where we think about second harmonic generation. If I have two red photons and a material that's active for second harmonic generation, and I put those two photons into the crystal, there's a non-zero chance those two photons are going to combine and give me green light. Within phonon-phonon scattering, we have two types of scattering. First, we have normal scattering, and we have this other type called umclap scattering. With normal scattering, g equals zero in the crystal momentum conservation law, which is to say that q1 plus q2 simply equals q3. On the other hand, in umclap scattering, g does not equal zero in the crystal momentum conservation law. So let's take a look at an example to see how that plays out. So with normal phonon-phonon scattering, we might have some one-dimensional dispersion like yay, and two acoustic phonons can combine together to give me this optical phonon. So there's some notes, though, that we should consider. First, as it doesn't change your crystal momentum, this is not going to be a scattering event that actually reduces thermal conductivity. While it may not reduce the thermal conductivity through scattering, what it does do is locally move the system towards the Planck distribution. And as a final note, this transition must involve allowed states. You can't have two phonons coming in and then trying to create a phonon at some point in the dispersion that is forbidden. Now let's take a look at umclap scattering. So I'm going to show not only the first spray one zone, but I'm also going to show that zone repeated to the right out to 3 pi over a. And let's consider two phonons coming in, q1 and q2, plus some reciprocal lattice vector g that's required to bring the phonon back into the first baryon zone, like yay. That's going to give us a new phonon, q3, where energy is conserved, but crystal momentum, as you can tell, is not conserved. So things to remember about umclap scattering. The energy is still going to be conserved, the crystal momentum is not conserved, and I've demonstrated this for the phonon plus phonon combining together to create a new phonon, but the reverse process is identical in that you can have one phonon decay into two phonons uh, plus a reciprocal lattice vector. Okay, now that we have some understanding of normal and umclap scattering processes, let's take a look at their impact on thermal conductivity. We're going to start by illuminating a surface with light such that you locally heat it and basically create a phonon source. It should also probably cool the backside so that it's going to act as a sink. We can visually see this in terms of a bunch of phonons coming from this left side, all of which have a positive Vx velocity. This gives us significant phonon momentum in the positive x direction. If we imagine just normal scatterings happening, we may find a redistribution of the phonon momentum, but there's not going to be a net change in this q vector to the right. Therefore, there's effectively no resistance to transmitting heat. 
On the other hand, with Umklopf scattering, we find that transport becomes diffusive because crystal momentum is not conserved, and while we started with a significant phonon momentum in the positive x direction, after a few Umklopf scattering events occur, now we have a significant fraction of our phonons moving in the wrong direction. Okay, this continues to be pretty hand wavy, but let's bring this Umklopf scattering back to the phonon mean free path and thermal conductivity. Umklopf scattering is going to be the dominant source of phonon scattering at room temperature and above, with a scattering rate proportional to population. From this, we obtain that the mean free path for phonons is inversely proportional with the temperature. Increasing temperature increases the phonon population and decreases the mean free path. Okay, to recap, what we have is a failure to conserve crystal momentum due to Umklopf scattering, which is enabled by an anharmonic lattice, which allows phonons to interact, and this leads to significantly lower kappa than might otherwise be obtained if we're simply relying on imperfections to scatter phonons. Okay, that's all for this video. Next time we're going to take a look at the temperature dependence of thermal conductivity. See you then.